the Dauntless. He takes a whiskey drink. He takes a lager drink. He sings the songs that remind him of the good times. He sings the songs that remind him of the better times. The mess hall is a massive party with the three of them on the edge. Linda had been outright ordered to relax and unwind in Barnabas's invite, as well as the touch of curiosity at how well the Canador mercenaries were doing had brought her to Big T Tuesday. Answer, living it up. All six of them were taking part of and even at points leading the drinking songs even as they downed tacos and other Mexican dishes two at a time. One of the Canador is watching the other five and chatting with a soldier as she occasionally shouts advice and the occasional joke. So, how was your first party with the Undaunted? Barnabas asks Linda as he returns with drinks that won't kill a Takra or Tret. It's funny. You guys know how to have fun, Vera says, even as she watches one man chase another down to steal his pants back. It's a kaleidoscope of crazy, but... Linda begins and Barnabas gives her an odd look to probe her on. How many trets do you have? A lot of the men here look like all the others, but they have normal auras. He follows her sweeping gesture and finds a large group of guys trading stories and pictures. He outright snorts at the sight of them. Hey, Johnny boy, Linda here thinks you're a tret. His shout is answered with a round of tequila raised and then thrown back. No trets there, unless you spot one of them getting their stomach pumped in the next two minutes. Then how? Why are their auras so normal looking? They've got control, really good control. I can use a bit of Axiom, but if you want the really impressive stuff, I need that caster gun. They can just do those things. They're adepts. They're also obsessed with the stuff. So that means you can hide your presence by just concentrating. Why didn't you learn how to do that? Linda asks in a combination of dread and annoyance. She'd been nervous around him almost every time he showed that maelstrom of boiling emotions and he could have covered it up the whole time. That's just rude. I have been, but we've only known each other for a couple of days and we've been on the case the whole time. Not to mention I still have to study, there's guard duty and any incident that I get deployed for. I've been a ground pounder for a few rapid responses already. Nerd Squad over there's been getting extra time off so long as they use it to keep pushing the Axiom bullshit they're figuring out. So they're where the rumors of human adepts have been coming from. They also help build that caster gun with all its weird effects, ice shot, gravity shot, and plasma barrage. You have other effects and some of them feel very, very dangerous. I do. I still can't believe you gave them up. That gun was cool. I just field tested it. A quick report and the footage of me using it is enough. I never owned it, although I will be requesting one be issued to me on a more permanent basis. That thing is a powerful force multiplier that gives a lot of lateral options in a fight. Oh, boring. Why do you have to talk about a good fight like it's some big strategy game? Train hard bring better toys and fight harder than the other guy, and you've got victory in your claws. Well, I don't have claws, so I have to be clever about things. Barnabas answers. The invitation had been last minute, but otherwise well-timed. With the council building in operation and everyone still in the process of setting up a temporary council chamber, there was a rather glaring hole in everyone's schedules. So here he was, walking in with both Lady Taikan Ped and Ambassador Tal to either side. He's dressed once more in appropriately formal attire. The white frilly suit with tribal jewelry and massively feathered hat, coupled with the sword and pistol that are gilded so they look more ornamental than practical, but are in fact still very practical. The music is somewhat akin to a harpsichord but played with crystals rather than keys. The chiming is a delicate and refined sound even as all three of them are led into a reserved room. Hmm, I suppose it makes sense. Welcome, Admiral Cistern, a strong voice says as a lopin man greets them. He seems to be wearing only a vest with frills, 
silken pants and a fancy hat tufted with distinctly dark red fur. It's nice to have another man in the group. We have a total of four now. You're Archibald Padpaw, aren't you? Ambassador Tal asks. Indeed I am. We've had some business dealings in the past. Archibald admits and she nods. I was able to open a fairly well-regarded series of lounges and cristalla bars with a few drinks mixed from the fruits I've been importing from Brule. They sell extremely well and allowed me more than just a leg up on the competition. A pleasure to meet you. I assume that I'm being offered some form of membership or a way to prove myself, Admiral Cistern says, offering his hand for Archibald to shake. Something of the sort. We don't often deal with people in military positions. The closest we have is Miss Liddy Rett, who's a major stockholder and public representative of Canid Solutions, Lady Tycanped says, showing that she's very much on top of things. Oh, she's here? She donated Onriac 4 to human interest last I saw her, Admiral Sister notes kindly. Just a tax loophole, darling. I made a great deal of money off of that generosity, the Canador businesswoman says, emerging from the back and offering a knowing smile. Although I must say it has been a delight to see how well you've connected with little Ambassador Tao. It went from adorable to fairly impressive. Oh, so there's no hard feelings that I grabbed on before you could get your daughters over to him, Nikti teases and Lydie simply smiles. I was teasing at the time, dear. Our little group allows us to bring our nearest four husbands and wives to these groups, so please, come in for good company, good food, and better advice, she says, even as Archibald casually lopes into the back room past her. Easy there, big man. Don't tempt me here. At that, Archibald goes from quadruped to bipedal and stands up taller than normal to look down at her. What's the matter? Don't tell me that you want to fly solo instead of in our power couple act, Archibald says, nuzzling into her, and she nuzzles back. Split names, Lady Taconped asks with a smile behind her fan. We both have our own business interests. Our portfolios are separate, but not our bedroom. Archibald notes before giving Lady a nip on the neck. She gasps and gives him a gentle shove. Later, my love. Later, we're with friends. I'm half tempted to let them watch, Archibald notes with a distinct growl. It is roughly that time. Is that how we look from the outside? Nikti asks curiously. Don't be absurd. Our husband has far greater control of himself. Lady Tacanped chides her. Only from practice of always being on. Nikti notes with a big smile. Oh, we must continue this inside, Liddy says, after successfully warding her husband off for the moment. In, in, we're all friends here, each of us seeking to maximize our worth and work. Oh, you make it sound like it's all business. We do need to unwind as well, and we're the ones who steer industry with or without political power. Another voice interrupts as all three of them are waved through the door. The bar is self-serve and has several sections depending on the type of liqueur you were going for. The previous speaker was a Greater Plains Nagasha, clad in a dress that brings to mind ballroom gowns, parade floats, and Chinese dragon puppets. The shimmering weave of the material suggests that part of it are from Kutha, worked into wires so fine they're woven like cloth and across the impossibly ostentatious gown, Gemstones of all kinds shine like stars. Harissa Repia. Oh my goodness, it's been too long. Lady Tikanped identifies her immediately as the owner of an entire line of fashion companies that can be found in almost any part of the galaxy. Just last week, she had held a fashion show for the best and brightest young designers to prove their vision and artistry for the whole of Prosperous Space to See. It hadn't entirely been to Admiral Cistern's taste, but the sheer variety of species in an even grander selection of clothing had been fascinating. 
Granted, the one that really made him sit up and wonder was when a Slobe model showed off her outfit as a series of bangles and other such things floating within her transparent, semi-liquid body. Jacqueline, my dear customer, I see the gown I designed serves you still. Finally found a man to strut it in front of? Well, I was rather busy. Lady Ticonped brushes it aside somewhat. Oh, I know, you've done very well for your age. It's quite hard to find that perfect balance between life, work, and self-care. I should know, it took me centuries. Just remember to take breaks, your job is important, but without you in it, how will anything get done? Yes, yes, you're completely correct. Now, are there any eggs on the way, little lady? You wouldn't be the first to start nice and young. We're waiting until I can confirm my sons are safe and well provided. And by galactic standards, I can't do that for them while they're in cruel space. So I need to get the train of humanity leaving cruel space reliable enough to trust my own children with it. Admiral Cistern saves his second wife from that line of inquiry and gets a grateful smile from the no longer as mortified Lady Tikanped, even as Nikti suppresses some laughter. Oh my, that's adorable, so selfless and giving or perhaps a convenient excuse to avoid an uncomfortable task as you sort things out all the more. Either way, a wonderful dodge. I toast your excellent strategy. Harissa says, lifting her delicate-looking flute of expensive alcohol, although we do talk a great deal of business here. Mariella notes walking up, revealing that her synthetic skin actually adjusts to local environments. Before she was simply an impossibly flawless Agila, now it looks like someone dyed her night sky blue complete with stars and decided the constellations would look better in a circuit pattern. The fact that there are comets and asteroids of what appear to be valuable metals zooming around her as part of the pattern damn near hypnotizes the man. Hey now, no muscling in. If you want... Nikti begins and Mariella kneels down to her level to look her in the eye. Still from above, but the intention is clear. That's later. Right now it's money I'm concerned about. I own numerous raw goods and metal production plants. I need to speak with Admiral Cistern and Lighty Red about their weapon production and where to get the most money from. They also need to talk to each other about not trampling one another's business prospects or if possible joint ventures are in the future. Strictly business. Pleasure is for after. I'm holding you to that, and I will take you apart one rivet at a time if you double-cross me. Please, we're all friends here. There's no need for hostility. I'm just saying, Tret girl, your whole raz is good and fragile, and now that there's a, a better Tret. You don't try to bring it in? Do you girls just like being soft and scared? Vera has had a few rounds of simulated tequila. There was a near constant effort to reproduce human food in ways that wouldn't kill the galactic community, and the Takra had taken a liking to the booze. What? That's not. I mean, really, it's not like that at all, Linda protests, even as she throws back her own drink before gesturing towards Barnabas, who's more than a little surprised that even with the watered-down stuff, both girls are proving to be lightweights. I mean, look at them. Look, where do you start? I believe I've become the third wheel in this conversation. He notes calmly as he drinks his full-strength tequila. He made a point to always have it in his hand so that neither would accidentally grab his drink and kill themselves with it, a habit that every man was being encouraged to develop. He drains the good stuff and feels the pleasant warmth spread through him. Oh yay? Prove it. You don't know where to start? Start wherever and work your way through the whole thing. Prove you're not just a scaredy claw. I'm no... I'm no scaredy cunt, Linda protests, and Barnabas sighs. I've had three glasses and I'm about to become the designated driver. He notes wryly to himself. But between Linda and Vera's impromptu spat, he's just background noise. He takes a bite of his final taco and quickly downs it before chasing it with the last of his tequila. Then he glances back and catches Linda's lips on his before her tongue finds its way into his mouth 
and after a few surprising seconds of a makeout, she passes out and beings to snore. Panicking slightly, Barnabas reaches for a chemical scanner primed to both Tret and Takra body chemistry. But before he can do so, Vera has decided that she wants a taste too and pulls him into a heavy kiss where she sucks hard and then passes out as well. Scanner comes up for safe levels of alcohol, but only just. Linda has half a lethal dose, and Vera has a third of one. With both his drinking and dinner partners out of commission, Barnabas resigns himself to getting them both to medical just to be safe.